Learning how to crochet amigurumi can be tough, and it breaks my heart when I hear from people who are giving up on their dream of learning how to crochet toys because they're struggling with one or more of these techniques. But that's not going to be you because we're going to deep dive into each one of these topics so that you can crochet toys with confidence. Hi, I'm Elise and I am a certified crochet instructor and my mission is to help you discover your own wonderful creativity through crocheting and knitting toys. And I want you all to know that you're going to find the resources that I talk about in this video in the description box below. But let's go ahead and get started with tip number one. The first thing that we're going to talk about is holes. And it is a common struggle for beginner amigurumi makers. Whether they are big holes, little holes, nobody wants them. This is one of the very first amigurumi toys that I ever made. This is Walter Wolf from Animal Friends of Pikapau 1. And he has a lot of holes. And the reason why that happened is because I did not have the correct combination of hook and yarn. There's a general rule for amigurumi makers that when you look at the yarn label and you see what crochet hook size they are recommending, you're going to subtract two millimeters from that number. For example, if your yarn label says five and a half millimeters, you're going to subtract two from that and it is going to be three and a half millimeters. And that's a great starting point, but it still may not be enough. You need to not be afraid to experiment a little bit. So get that three and a half millimeter crochet hook out and work with the yarn a little bit. And if you see that, oh, it's just not the correct tension, it's not tight enough, it's not covering those holes enough, then you may need to still go down a little bit. So always know that in the beginning, it's a little bit of trial and error. Now I use a worsted weight yarn and a three and a half millimeter crochet hook and I know that that works for me. Don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. And I also have a little cheat sheet for you if you would like it. Just check the link in the description box below, but it shows each one of the different yarn weights and what crochet hook size is recommended for amigurumi. That's a great starting point. The next tip we're going to talk about is yarning over versus yarning under. And if you're super new to crochet, maybe you've never even heard of yarning under. And that's something that I had never experimented with until I made Little Lino Lobster from Animal Friends of Pikapau 2. He is made using a different technique. Yarning over creates a V-shaped stitch, but yarning under creates an X-shaped stitch stitch. Now also yarning under uses less yarn and it creates a very dense tight fabric and that is something that a lot of amigurumi lovers really like. Now I'm not going to be demonstrating yarning over versus yarning under because I've already made an entire video about it and you'll be able to find that in the description box below. But that's another thing that you can experiment with especially if you're dealing with holes and you aren't loving the tension of your toys. When I made Little Lino I was actually surprised that yarning under created a slightly smaller toy and it was obvious when I was crocheting him that my stitches were a lot tighter. I wasn't using as much yarn and therefore it was causing a little bit of tension in my wrist. So those are some things to note, but if you want to know a lot more about yarning over versus yarning under, make sure to check out that link. Isn't he such a cutie? Hey, Lino. I get this question a lot. What's the best yarn for amigurumi? And my answer is, um, I wish there was one yarn that was perfect for amigurumi, that was affordable and that was available all around the world and I still haven't found a yarn like that yet. But I do have a few suggestions for you. Number one, a lot of people really love cotton yarn for amigurumi. One of the reasons why is because it has a little bit less stretch than other fibers and that creates a really nice toy that doesn't stretch out and you don't get holes quite as easily. But there's a reason why some of us don't like using 100% percent cotton and that's because what we just talked about is that it doesn't have a lot of stretch and for some of us of a certain age it is tough on our hands and that's the reason why I personally no longer use cotton yarn but it is gorgeous and if you don't have any issues like arthritis or inflammation in your hands then you go right ahead use that cotton yarn and enjoy it because it really is gorgeous. 
gorgeous. And one of my very favorite ones is the Paint Box Cotton DK. It is beautiful and it comes in a lot of gorgeous colors. For those of us who can't use cotton yarn, I have a recommendation. I love wool blends. They are fantastic. They have the look of wool, but many of them have a little bit of acrylic or nylon in them to give them even more stretch. They usually feel really great in your hands unless you're allergic to wool, but they create beautiful toys. That's mostly what I use these days, but there is one negative and typically it's the cost. Some of my favorite wool blends are Barocco Vintage, Paint Box Wool Mix Air and Premier Yarns Stitch Please. And for those of you who don't want to use cotton and you don't want to use a wool blend, you can also use 100% acrylic yarn. And that is a great option because it's a little more stretchy, it is very affordable, and it is widely available. And one of my favorites is the Premier Basics Worsted. It is a fantastic yarn that comes in 81 different colors and it comes in solids, marls, multis, and tweeds. And their solids color is seven ounces and the other ones are five ounces, and that is a big skein of yarn. Typically, most skeins of yarn come in three and a half ounces. So make sure to check the link in the description box below for all of my Amigurumi yarn recommendations. My next tip is about yarn weight. When you are looking for the right yarn, you need to pay special attention to the weight of the yarn, and your best source is the actual pattern that you are working on. Most patterns will share what weight yarn is recommended for the project, and one one way to find the weight of yarn when you're out shopping is to look at the yarn label. So this is the paint box wool mix Aaron and right here you're going to see the little number four and that's a medium weight yarn. That also translates to worsted or Aaron weight yarns but yarn weights are numbered from zero all the way to seven. The bigger the number, the heavier the weight of yarn, which just means the thickness of the yarn itself. So make sure to pay special attention to your yarn weight. And now that leads us into the next tip, which is about finding the right crochet hook. The next tip for Amigurumi beginners is to find the right crochet hook. And that can be a little daunting because there are a lot of crochet hooks out there. But one thing to know is that all crochet hooks are basically the same. They all have a point, a head, throat, shaft, grip, and a handle. Some hooks even have little thumb rests, but there are two different kinds of crochet hooks out there and they are inline and tapered. Inline crochet hooks have a head that is in line with the shaft of the hook and they typically have a little bit pointier head. Tapered hooks have a narrowing along the throat of the hook and a wider gap between the head and the shaft and they typically have rounder heads than the inline crochet hooks and it really does all come down to personal preference. I personally love tapered crochet hooks. If you just want my recommendation, I love a Furls Odyssey 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, but I will just be honest, they are very expensive. That's why I only have one of them. But I did a review of eight of the most popular crochet hooks in a different video. So if you would like to see the pros and cons of each one of those hooks, please check the description box below. When it comes to crochet hook material, I do have a very specific recommendation for you. Always use metal. Don't use wood. Don't use plastic. They drag. And it may be tempting to find this beautiful hand-carved wooden crochet hook, but it's not going to be great for amigurumi. It might be great for other projects, but it is going to be a pain in the rear for an amigurumi maker. My next tip is all about stuffing. And you can typically find polyfill fiber stuffing at your local craft store. It is the most widely available in the United States. And it really just comes in a big old bag or you can actually buy a big box of it and it's a great stuffing fiber to get into all the nooks and crannies of your toys. Grab little pieces of it and stuff it down into your toy and sometimes it comes with a little bamboo stick that can help you to get down into each and every nook and cranny. I recently discovered a brand new stuffing from Morning Glory called Cluster Stuff and what's interesting about this one is that it's a softer stuffing and and what I mean by that, these are little individual clumps. And as you're adding them, it creates a softer toy. So a lot of amigurumi, it's stuffed really firmly to give it a nice shape and to fill it all in. But sometimes you might want a softer toy that's a little bit more squishy. And I would really recommend this cluster stuff fiber. It is fantastic to create a little bit squishier toy. My next tip is all about amigurumi necks. These can be really tricky because unless you stuff them perfectly, they're gonna start 
oh, my neck popped. <laughs> They're gonna start leaning right or left or back or forward, and that's probably not what you want. So for amigurumi dolls in particular, or any amigurumi animals that have a longer neck, I have a little trick. I get a piece of inexpensive felt and I cut it the length that I want it for the neck. And then I just roll it to the actual width of the neck and I stuff it down in there. That way it's not going to deflate because stuffing deflates over time. This will always remain very secure and her neck is never gonna fall one way or the other. I also did a full video about Amigurumi doll tips and tricks if you want to check that out as well. My next tip is all about Amigurumi eyes. This is when it gets really fun because you're going to be able to give your toys tons of personalities by really focusing on their eyes. In my Bubble the Catster pattern, he just has little five millimeter black Amigurumi safety eyes. And these are super great because they look really cute, they're very crisp, and they're very clean. Up until last year, I was just buying Amigurumi eyes in multi-packs on Amazon. And they had those little curved backs that were always popping off or they were super hard to get on. I was just so frustrated. So I did a little deep dive into Amigurumi eyes and I found two websites that are fantastic. One of them is Glass Eyes Online and the other one is 6060 Eyes. And I will leave links for both of them in the description box below. But they have fan fantastic amigurumi eyes in every shade, color, shape you can imagine. But the best place to start is just plain black eyes, but you can do a whole lot with plain black eyes. You can put them really close together or you can put them really wide apart. You can put them high up on the face or you can put them really low down on the face. Make sure to experiment about the placement of the eyes. This is my brand new pattern that I haven't even released yet and it is a kitten and her mittens. And one of the things that I like to do with this these is just add a tiny bit of white embroidery underneath the eye. And this just gives it a little bit of extra detail that I think is really cute and it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Another thing you can do, especially if you're making a toy that has dark yarn and you're not going to be able to see those little black amigurumi eyes, is to use a felt backing. This is just inexpensive felt that I found at my craft store and I just made little ovals with it and I think it looks really, really cute. This is something to give your toys even more expression and I think that she just has kind of a little surprised look on her face and I think it is just adorable. And finally, the last thing that you can do, which I think is so much fun, is to add little glasses. My little pig, which is one of my patterns as well, I found these little amigurumi glasses on Etsy. Just do a search on Etsy for Barbie glasses, doll glasses, but you can also make your own. I also just finished Mrs. Habiba and my husband made these glasses out of wire for me. He just got some kind of wire that he's got in his garage and a little plier and he shaped them exactly the way I wanted them. And I also did a full video on all about amigurumi eyes if you would like to see that as well. And I have a Pinterest board that is only about amigurumi eyes and different things that you can do with them. So that should give you a lot of inspiration. You can also embroider the eyes. You don't have to use safety eyes and embroidering the eyes can look so amazing as well. Mrs. Habiba looks like she is just smiling, but it can make them look sleepy or surprised. There's a lot of different things that you can do with amigurumi embroidery for the eyes. My next tip for for amigurumi beginners is about embroidering. Now this can be the most frustrating part of amigurumi. We work so hard to crochet all the little pieces and then you get to the face and you have to embroider it and you think, ah, it's not looking the way I wanted it to look. But there are a few tips and tricks that I can give you to make it look better and better. Number one, a lot of the embroidery parts is just about practice. But number two is I generally use embroidery floss, not yarn, to embroider facial features. Embroidery floss is a lot neater and I don't use all six strands. I usually use one, two, or three strands that you're easily able to pull out of embroidery floss. For Granny here, she has embroidered eyes and a little embroidered mouth as well. And I only used two strands and it looks very nice and neat. And sometimes you have to experiment a little bit because you might try one strand and it's way too light and you can't even see it and you try three and it's too much. So just play around with the embroidery and when in doubt, rip it out. I do that all the time. And for beginners, I really love simple embroidery for the face. This is Benedict the Bitty Bunny and I have a full tutorial for Benedict and a free pattern.
pattern, which I will link to in the description box below. And as you can see, it's just a little Y shape for his nose and mouth, and that can look really clean. Another fun way to embroider on the face is to add little eyebrows. And I love this one on Mr. Pencil. He's also a free pattern and a full tutorial here on YouTube. And what I love about him is that those little eyebrows give him a ton of expression on his face. He looks so sweet and happy, and he's got his little smile on his mouth. But that's one thing I really love for beginners is just to find patterns that have very simple embroidery. Now with something like my not so big bad wolf here, when you're doing the snout, that's the only time I will use yarn because it's a lot easier to make that satin stitch that fills in that entire black area right there on his snout by using yarn. And I typically like to use like a sport weight or a DK weight yarn. I'm not using the worsted weight yarn for that part, but then I'm only using embroidery floss again to just embroider the little mouth right here. I'm not using yarn for that part because it typically doesn't look as neat and tidy. I think that embroidery floss makes things look neat and tidy and yarn can be a good way to do a satin stitch when you have to fill a lot of area. My next tip for beginner amigurumi makers is to focus on the face. The face is a really important part because we as humans are hardwired to look at the face of creatures, animals, and humans and to feel an emotion. And by getting the face right, you're going to be happier with your amigurumi toys. And one of my best tips is to focus on symmetry. Unless it's purposeful and you want to make it kind of wonky, that's fine. But for the most part, if you're making a standard toy, you want to really get the symmetry right. So make sure when you're putting those little amigurumi eyes that they're between the same two rounds. That way they're exactly in line with one another. And then when you're doing your embroidery, make sure that your lines are straight. And in the beginning, that can be a tough thing to do, but it just takes practice. You can also add little blush to cheeks. That way it gives them a little rosy appearance and just a little more character. You may love the way the designer did the facial features, but you can play around with it and see what works best for you with the eye placement, nose placement, ear placement, all of those things. It can make your toy look so different by changing the placement of those features. Amigurumi beginners ask me a lot of questions about how to sew on all those body parts. And one of my best resources is actually my Bubble the Catster tutorial, which I will link for in the description box below. You could skip all the way to 49 minutes and 28 seconds, and I will show you exactly how I added these little ears, and that's how I do all of my seaming for all of my amigurumi, whether it's the arms, the ears, the nose, whatever. But the two things that I want you to keep in mind as you are seaming is number one, that you are doing it securely and that you are doing it as neatly as possible. When you make those body parts, make sure that you're leaving a very long tail. That way you can use that to add those body parts on and you're not having to get just a random piece of yarn and trying to join the two together. It's so much easier when the yarn is already attached to one of those body parts. And when it comes to neatness, a lot of times that just takes practice. If you're really struggling with the yarn that you're using and it just is not coming out neat no matter what you're doing, you can actually try to split your yarn so that you only have a few of the strands on your yarn. It works with some yarns and some yarns it's not going to work well for. But that's another way to try to get it a little more neat. You never want to sacrifice security for neatness because you don't want those body parts to come off, especially if they're being played with by little children. I hope you enjoyed all of these beginner amigurumi tips and tricks. Stay safe out there and happy stitching.